Hey guys, welcome back. After all of our After Effects testing, our EXRs are working. We are ready to render. And I know this might seem boring, but I have a couple of tips and tricks that might help your renders actually go a little bit faster. We're gonna do one version of that here inside of Blender, and then I'm gonna show you some tricks with command line rendering and also figuring out and estimating your render times and if you're getting the best bang of your buck, depending on how powerful your machine is. So, quick recap for anyone who didn't see the first video, we are rendering in cycles. We have it on GPU compute and we are using turbo tools at draft rapid and in medium rare settings. In our initial test, those settings look pretty good and our renders were clean. So we're gonna be using turbo tools to get faster renders out of cycles. One last thing I like to do normally before I start rendering, I'll go to the compositor, make sure in our options we're on GPU and in turbo tools, our cache is set. If you're doing a clean render, sometimes it's good to cache and uncache and refresh all this to get a new cache for your fullerized render and that might help with any denoising you might need later on. All right, and then in the output settings, we're doing our multi-layer EXR. The default setting might have this to overwrite for your image sequence, but we're actually gonna uncheck this. We're gonna click preview. Since we can't really preview our EXRs very well, this will make a JPEG so we can just make sure things are working. And we're gonna do placeholders. Placeholders means that if Blender sees an image sequence file already there, it's gonna skip that one and start rendering the next one, and we're gonna use this to render multiple instances of Blender. And this is how we're gonna have our own little mini render farm and use multiple instances of Blender to render the same project. And I'm gonna click on this folder, I just wanna make sure we're going to our tutorial folder. Hit accept, I'm gonna save this. And the last thing I like to do is I like to go to Window and Toggle System Console. I like having this open because it's gonna let me know what Blender is doing, if there's any errors, and also give me an estimate on each frame per second which we can use to calculate how long this is gonna to take to render. Let's hit Control F12, open up, our command window and let's kind of see how everything's going. All right, so our average time per frame, it started at 14 seconds and it looks like it's jumping down to nine seconds. And as you can see, we're getting our image sequences in here. We have our EXR and also our preview file so we can kind of see what we're looking at in this JPEG. So now that we know that that's working, we have an average frame of nine seconds. So what we can do is if I, if I right click on Blender I'm gonna open up another instance of Blender 4.3. We're gonna open up the same project file and we're gonna leave everything the same because we know that our output is on placeholders. I'm gonna hit Control F12 again. Let me close some of this. And the render time might go up slightly, but what we have right now is we have two instances of Blender running to render out our project. And the next thing we can do to make sure this is kind of working, we're gonna to go to the task manager and we're just gonna keep an eye on our resources. If this starts spiking too high, if your GPU, CPU, or memory starts spiking too high, you might run into a little bit of issues depending on your scene. For example, we just lost one instance of Blender because it was probably trying to calculate too much by having these screens up, as well as running Blender, multiple instances of Blender in the background. And this doesn't happen with all projects. I knew it happened with this one, that's why I wanted to show you. So what we could try doing one more time is opening up Blender, doing another instance, we'll render it out. And now again, we have two instances rendering out our project. So as you can see, our resources are getting pretty high. And again, depending on your scene or your graphics card, your hardware, you might not be able to open up too many instances of Blender. But if you have a crazy rock solid machine and everything's running smoothly and these numbers are low, feel free to do it again and open up another instance of Blender. So I'm gonna close these, and I'm also going to close all the windows of Blender. Just have a fresh slate, and we have no instances of Blender. And so we got some of our frames here. We're gonna leave those, that's fine. And this is a bit hard to judge because OBS is using so much of my GPU right now for the screen recording. But let me show you one more way to use command line rendering, where you can do the same process, have multiple instances of Blender. It's gonna be a little less resource intensive, we're gonna use that information to calculate and estimate how long our render is gonna take. So first up, the way we're gonna do this is I'm gonna show you how to do this to work with either Cycles or Eevee. And this is gonna be using Cycles without Turbo Tools. And then I'll show you the little bit of tweak we have to do to get the command line rendering to work if you are using Turbo Tools. So you can see I have some prompts already saved here. And I just have these set up so I don't forget what they are and we can set up the command line rendering really quickly. I'll leave these in the description, but let's just go through the process really quick so you can see exactly what's happening here. All right, so I opened up the command line renderer and next thing we're gonna do, I'm going to right click 
on Blender, Properties. I'm gonna open the file location and we're just gonna figure out where our Blender 4.3 is. And we're gonna drag that into the command prompt and we get this, I hit space, dash B, which means we wanna render in the background. Then we're gonna hit space and I need to find where our project file is. All right, I found the Blender project file. I'm gonna drag that in and I'm going to hit space again, dash A. And so just to look at these prompts, you have dash A, which means rendering out the full animation. And then right here we have dash S 500. This means start at frame 500, dash E, end at frame 510, and it's an animation. But since we set ours to placeholders, the animation isn't going to override any of the stuff that we did from our earlier test. So let's go back here. Let's hit enter. And now we have an instance of Blender rendering in the background. All right, so that's the process to get things started if you're using just regular cycles or Eevee. Let me show you how to do this if you're using Turbo Tools. This is our main instructions that we get from Turbo Tools. And the process is pretty much the same. And I'll just go through this process really quick so you can save your own script later. And in case you're having issues getting the command line rendering working with Turbo Tool. So let's just go ahead and follow this. So Blender dash B, I'll drag in my version of Blender again. I'll hit space dash B. And it says path to our Blender file. So that's just our project file again. So I'll just grab that. I'll drag that over. I'll hit space. And this is where it gets a little bit different. We'll do dash dash Python. And then you'll see that Turbo Tools recommends path to this script. So what you'll do when you get Turbo Tools is you'll get your own command line rendering script. And this is what's gonna help it make sure it uses Turbo Tools in your batch rendering. So this, I can also just drag in. And I'll just hit space. And let's just copy the rest of this just for speed. We'll paste it in there, hit enter. And you'll see that the command line rendering looks a little bit different. It's just because it's doing a little bit different process using Turbo Tools. But now you have batch rendering going. And we can kind of do the same thing since I already saved this here. I can copy this. I can make a new command line rendering window and I can paste it back in. And now we're up to date with two instances of Blender rendering our project out with Turbo Tools. So again, this is kind of tough with the screen recording resources, but let's just see really quick what we got per frame second here. All right, so we scroll up, we see that we're averaging about 21, let's just call it 22 seconds per frame. Let's just see what the next one is really quick. And then the next frame was a little bit faster. So I'm gonna let that keep rendering and this is where we're gonna start to calculate our time of what it'll take to render this project. So there's lots of these websites online, but you can do a image sequence calculator. And so time for a frame, we said we're doing about 17 seconds. This was 750 frames on one machine. So this will be done in about three and a half hours. So now that we know that information, I'm going to make another window or, or bring up another instance of command prompt. And I saved my prompt right here. So let's go ahead and run another instance of Blender in the background and kind of get an idea of what we're doing performance wise with two instances of Blender running in the background. All right, so right now our second instance jumped up to 35.82 seconds per frame. We're gonna see what the second one looks like because you know it's good to get that persistent data in there and the second frame might go down a little bit and I'll give us a better idea of our average time. All right, and we see the second frame ended up being 30 seconds. Let's call it 31 seconds. So then what I like to do is I like to go back to this. I bumped this up to 31 seconds, which increased our hour time, but we can add another machine because we're technically running two instances. Now, if I wasn't screen recording, almost every time this number has been less and you can keep adding instances for the amount of processing power that you have depending on your machine build. At some point in time, you're gonna run out of GPU memory and system memory, and you're gonna have diminishing returns and it's just not gonna be worth it. Without screen recording, my GPU is much lower, so I might be able to get away with another instance of Blender in the background. I'm gonna pause the screen record, I'm gonna see the average frame per second after this, and I'm gonna come back with the results. All right, we are back with a couple of tests. I did one, two, three, and four instances of Blender, 
and you can see the time start to increase to the point where eh, maybe not be worth it. So an OBS is running, I'm averaging about 14.22 seconds per frame. Let's pop that in, one frame. So to complete this, we're a little shy of three hours. So let's add that there. Two instances of Blender at 25 seconds. So that's technically two machines. And we get 2.6 hours. And again, remember these are all just estimates, but it's good to know. Three instances, almost 40 seconds. Technically three machines. Okay, so we're kind of still getting there, but we're bringing it down. Two and a half hours, two, six hours, almost three hours. And now here's the big one where I started to run out of memory for the project. Two and a half minutes of frame. So let's just put this at 2.25, four machines, and then we get up to a seven hour render for the same frame. So you can see on this machine using three instances, we might bring it down a little bit. Is it worth maybe a half hour-ish, maybe 45 minutes of just going two? Maybe not. This started to bog down the machine and four definitely completely bogged my machine down, hit the GPU at 100% and things got a little sketchy. So I came back later guys after I was working on this video and I came across an awesome product by Stefan, I hope I pronounced your name right, but he makes an add-on called the Blender Render Queue. And if you kind of just don't want to mess with any of the stuff that we just went over and you just want some great tool that is like the Render Queue that you used to have from Cinema 4D, this is definitely the product for you. And I have just the light version, which has been amazing, but if you need more complicated renders, there's other versions you can upgrade to as well. But let me show you a couple awesome of Stefan's Blender Render Queue that are just really awesome. If you don't wanna worry about all this stuff, really will make it a lot easier. So I know we're looking at a different project really quick, but this is probably my new way I'm gonna prefer rendering. And the reason I'm showing you this is because I have a project here of a bunch of different scenes that were all made to use one commercial. And the great thing with this is I have to render out all these scenes and put the edit together in After Effects or Premiere later. And I don't like sitting around and babysitting my renders. And this is again using Turbo Tools and Cycles, so you don't have to do any complicated scripts or anything like that. But the great thing with this is I can just go up here to Render and I can say, Add to Blender Render Queue. And let me minimize this. And what it's doing right now is the Blender Render Queue is coming up and getting ready. And the cool thing is I have all my scenes right here ready to render. So if you have just a single scene, you can just select the scene that you need. And if you also look at the start and end frames that I have set up inside the project file, it's updating to what I need. Or I can also set different numbers in here if I need that as well. So I can set this back to zero. I can hit render and we are doing EXRs again. And so you know how earlier we did a preview frame, a JPEG, so say the JPEG and the EXR so we could actually see what we're rendering. Well, the nice thing with this render queue is all that, all that's built in right into the plugin. So here you'll see, you know, it's giving me a little bit of an update of how long this render will take, what frame it's on. You can actually see the progress. You have a little preview of what it's rendering to make sure this is looking correct so you know exactly what's happening. And it's really just a great plugin. It kind of blows my mind that this isn't just built into Blender. Because one of the things making the switch that I miss the most is having the render queue. A couple of the other options that I also like is I can auto shut down the computer when it's done. And the best feature too is let me hit stop on this. I'm gonna reset the status right here. By, hit, by right clicking, I have a lot of different options of things I can do. Um, I can duplicate this to be able to change the scene. And let me just delete that. And since I have multiple scenes, I can right click, I can say Q multiple, and I can load up all my scenes that I have saved in there with the correct frame ranges. And I can literally just hit render and forget it. If I click auto computer shutdown, I don't even have to think about it and I'll shut my computer down when it's all said and done. One last thing really quick is let me delete all this and I'm just going to delete this project file. So I don't have anything open except the Blender Render Queue. And if I go ahead and click Add Files and I go back to that same project file, without even having Blender open, I can load that file. And again, it's gonna see all my scenes so I can add them all to the queue and I can hit Render 
and I'll start rendering. And I've actually found that when no versions of Blender are even opening that I get really good times with the Blender render queue. And I think it's even faster than when I do have Blender open because you know, it's using less resources. So this is just one more additional rendering tool in the tool set. And I'll leave a link for this in the description as well. So that's how I like to render. Now that that's all done in the next video, we're gonna bring it all into After Effects. We're also gonna get some nulls and camera from Blender. We're gonna bring that in After Effects and we're gonna use that information to composite some footage, some elements, give a little bit of snow dust coming off of the mountains. And we'll end it all with a nice color grade using Dehancer. So that's all to come up next. I'll see you in the next video, guys.